Okay guys, a couple of days have passed and what has happened are I ordered a camshaft and I ordered 24 hydraulic tappets. Sitting in box, just one to show you. Right, there's the camshaft anyway. I've gotten, I've gotten off Cork Engine Centre who supply me with a lot of my stuff. Now we're back in here looking at our timing chain, just right fast. I don't want to be, I think I'm a bit long winded on this so maybe it's getting a bit slow and boring on you. Anyway. Without knowing where the crank is, okay, we have a lock and pin far in the bottom, but I don't have that lock and pin. Without looking too much where the crank is, and I'm not concerned about cam crank correlation because I had no issues with it to start with, with my cam sensor sitting up and in right in there. Uh, when I look very visually, my balance shaft, there's a little marker keyway up in there that lines up. My cam shaft has a little lock and pin that in theory sits in there, and I probably have to say this already, there's also a little locating tab up here, a little butt bud that comes out, a little locating tab in here, same over here, my cam pin lines up there, my little locating pin then up here comes through and locates on the top of it. This camshaft in here, the, the bottom one, runs parallel with the actual top of the head, and what else are we going to do? So we're, we're happy enough that the crank is in its timed position. Now, what I want to show you, so the camshaft I've gotten, okay, if I sit and, I'm going to turn it around in my hand, one-handedly, if I sit and look at it like that, that's where that sits there, that sits up there, if you can see it, it's in through that little hole there. Now, if I'm going to hold that, and you can see the actual cut out on it. If I'm going to hold that in roughly that position, look at where the, at where these bits are, okay? You can see them if they're held relatively parallel with camshafts is underneath. These yokes sit to allow me, and another one over there and there, they sit to allow me, to, granted the camshaft there was back that way a little bit, little bit further, okay? But they sit, in theory, in a position, as all the other ones are, to get me in at my head bolts. But we can see very visually, and as we, I don't know if we do know or can see, that little cutout is, is just in there, okay? Same here. So that camshaft is there for rotating, 100%, okay? What I don't understand, as I said, and I maybe explained this long winded already, is how this is that they ended up relatively back right. Not bang on, but relatively back right. I think there was interference, cam, no, cam spun, interference, and then it spun again, and hence we're back in this position where it's just, luckily, I suppose, in roughly in the same or the right position. Here, I'm gonna show, yeah, so there's the cutout, 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 and fast, I'm gonna pop over to the opposite side. Little cutout, little cutout, and then the cut out in there again, same on the bottom cam. So for definite, it's that camshaft that's after spinning, rotating or something. Now on this one, it's machined and stuck onto it. I believe it's part of the casting. So are the lobes of the cams. That gear on the front is, is pressed on. And something's after moving in there anyway. It's time to start disassembling this crack and the same on the other side. Get the two camshafts off and pull off my belt and get in 24 hydraulic tappets get our camshafts back in and start lining up. Also, just to show on the front, this thing is at 12 o'clock there, which is top end center on the front, but we don't, I'm not gonna concern myself with the crank. Don't need to right now. I'm not gonna overthink this. I'm just gonna make it work, that's all. Um, if it worked already, it's gonna work again. So it's a case of pull apart, camshaft on. I'll show you a cross reference of the two camshafts when in hand, if we need to uh, verify, okay? That's it, drive on and get okay, this thing together. Camshaft off. I just think it's really cool. So we'll, those marks. Those marks, they're not bang on straight, but they're not a million miles away from it. So my camshaft kind of rolls on me when I touch it. So now we're pretty much bang on there now, okay? Now we're looking at then, and then we come up and look for our little cutouts. Cutout in that one is down there. See ya. Lobes on the camshaft, if you can see it, here are pointing, we'd say, oh, this one, the lobes of that camshaft are pointing down, down the way. It's just really cool, like, look, lobes sitting up the way. Really cool, but some of these things can be really complicated and hard to find, and i.e., how could you not think it's not a timing chain that are breaking or snapping? Who would jump on a, a camshaft being banjaxed? But, lobes looking up at us here. 
there. Set the rotating about, would it be 90 degrees? We'll actually spin it around and make it the same. If we made our, if we made the lobes on our camshafts the same, i.e. pointing in the same direction. And then we come over and look at our marks here. Look, it's, you'd think that that's all one piece, but it is pressed on there. You can see a separation between the shaft and stuff. But anyway, that's our problem found. Proved and being reassembled on our engine over here in a while. I'm going to start putting in this. I'm going to change them hydraulic tappets and roll on from there. Okay, just to fast show why I don't like these hydraulic tappets. Oop. You can see how spongy and soft are gone. We could say that it's because the engine wasn't running for a week or so, but I don't believe that they should. There's the new ones. If I try and squeeze that, I can't. All right, that's the reason I'm changing. 24 of these yokes, and they're all sitting there. They're relatively easy to get at once. Camshafts are off. I only put in a little locking tab for that and actually left my timing chain nearly sitting in place. I took off the guide here, or actually the tensioner I took off, and the pulley looks stayed sitting on there. So I just slid it back, took up my cam box, and here, lo and behold, my camshafts and stuff are over there, and, and this is what I'm changing at this point in time. Camshaft in on this side, what was it? 12, 12 hydraulic tappets in on this side. What I done, and people would probably give out to me for it, I actually just, that's a little hydraulic yoke that kind of, I don't know how you'd even show it, it, it kind of holds the, the gears from banging and rattling around the place. I put a vice grips on it, nice and gently, and it didn't start, it didn't move too far anyway, it's pretty much in line. Um, that's what I done there. I actually put, I had one of these one time to give me a jib, I was pushing it the wrong way, so I just put a marking on it, just in case it was gonna go, and then I was trying to bring it the opposite way back, okay? Uh, when I come around here, because my pin was still in here, my pins are, my cam in here is lined up, the intake cam shaft. When I, if you can look in, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in there. The little shanks are level with the head at this point in time, so I'm happy with that. I'm also happy with that. And now it's time for the cap to go back on, clean it up, put a sealer around it, and sit it back into place. Okay, 12 hydraulic tappets replaced in the opposite bank. Chain again just hanging there, same as the other side was. And time for this one, this side to go back there. Okay guys, I have put on my timing cover on the back, and I've put on my flywheel. What I want to do, and the reason I'm leaving this stuff off up here, is I want to put it together. It's a really hard engine to turn, so what I want to do is I want to bolt on my gearbox, I want to fit in my starter, bolt on my torque converter in there, and then turn it with the starter motor. I want to see what way it sounds, what way it looks, blah, blah, blah. Now I could do a compression check at that stage. This is probably as much as I needed to take off, not knowing that I had camshaft gone rather than a timing chain so I probably didn't really need to disassemble all this crap but anyways going back together now and if I have any problem I can still operate away up here without the necessity to go into here again okay that makes sense time to squeeze it up and get this thing crank bolts that I spoke about for the torque converter are in there behind the starter motor starter motor just hanging there they're buried in here you have to rotate the engine you're going to get in it one at a time and yeah they're going back in now gearbox being sat back on okay guys Starter motor back on, gearbox bolted back on. I have to give it a wash at some stage, but right now I'm not in that. Too many bits and pieces all over the place. Uh, oil feed pipes and stuff for transference or whatever from the gearbox to the oil cooler and stuff. Have um, spilt oil out in the ground, put in little grommets to stop them. But what I've done is I've just connected a starter and I've, in the wiring loom then I found the actual big black wire for the uh, solenoid of the starter motor. What I've done is I'm only just cranking just to have a little look you've seen me doing this before right there is no compression there because i have no injectors in it but i've just grabbed a little standard little a petrol engine is all compression gauge and we have compression of these three cylinders so it's hard for me to hold it's only a rubber top hard for me to hold that in maybe if i stuck it in it would blow it out whoa right we saw that huh one little way of doing it single-handed, okay? Um, so we have compression there. We're ready to uh, reassemble rocker covers, two of them, injectors, and I'll also go along and put on my my covers here. I just wanted to leave them off until I was sure of where I was going. So time for this to be reassembled. We'll tag up then again in a minute. Okay, we're back together as much as I can get back together. At this point in time, I'm gonna give it to a young lad to 
wash, find the covers back on it. And that was off prior to me and cleaned up around here. Just to, it was leaking, actually the, an intake manifold, roller flap little thing broke in here, which was leaking oil and fell out. I just made up a little bracket, can we see it? In there to try and keep it snug in. So that little bolt that you see here is just pressing up against the actual intake runner flap to stop it falling out. Customer wants to have it running first prior to I suppose spending any more money on it so look all that crack is easy enough to get at up in the car but at this point in time she's going to be going back together we have our exhaust and all these bits and pieces back on turbo back on and time to i'm going to sit it up there and then i'll walk away after it's washed and handed to alan Thank you. why not alan has just had to ask me what he's going to start it we have had a total change of plans alan was busy on another wagon over here so because of that i just carried on and i popped it up into place and connected everything that i could figure out on it um but anyway she's back together high pressure sorry low pressure pump back in the tank so i didn't actually record the first original cranking which happened about two or three minutes ago so she cranked maybe for i don't know 30 40 seconds or so but yeah alan go for it man there's alan inside and you go and turn in the key Back and running. Running on five plus one cylinder. So she's up and going, lads. We are back on a winner anyway. I was debating on what Alan said. What Alan said was, could it have um could we have hydrolocked or anything here? Do you know, could the pump was changed, injectors had shared the steel in them, could it have Hydrolocked at some stage, and could a hydrolock have caused our camshaft twist? Potentially, maybe. Injectors do fail like crazy on. Um, that's our initial fire up. So look, we'll have a whole load of teething problems between here and when we get it, I suppose, up and running. But anyway, look, that's for for now, yeah. Happy days, says Alan. Happy days. <laughs> Happy days. Smile, lads. I'll talk to you tomorrow when I have um, this thing somewhat put back together. Okay, we are out on road in our tour egg. She's driving the finest at this point in time anyway. And I suppose I'm just going to clock up, I suppose, as many miles as I can in this thing, drive it for a day or two. We've 167,000, 167,665 miles on it. After doing about 20 miles in it or so, so far off, picking up parts and stuff, which are thrown on the passenger seat. And... Yeah, I'm just going to keep on going, but I uh, think for this one anyway, we are done. Okay, this thing is done. She's after doing um, she's after doing 100 miles or so. Everything seems to be working as it should do. We're starting running all good. So for this one, yeah, what can catch you out? Could it be... A chain, could it be a camshaft? Could it be what? We're low on fuel, hence the bomb. Oh, service light on. Um, we're debating on a hydrolock causing this uh, to fail. Debating on it. What could have caused it? I don't know. Could the pump have locked? Or what? Injectors do fail on them quite often. If they fail quite often, could that have been over, not over fueling, but dumping fuel in? I've seen that before. I don't know what would have caused it. I know the pump and the injectors were changed, so maybe it's a hydrolock. Other than that, it's just camshaft failure. Uh, last time I saw it on a sat, the alternator belt broke and the alternator belt went up underneath the time belt and created valved piston damage. So on this one, what happened to it before me, I don't know, but I know the camshaft failed. Anyway, neither here nor there, guys. Hopefully it's somewhat of good to someone. I get something from it. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you all next cartoon. That's kind of it for this one. Volkswagen Touareg V6 uh, camshaft failure and running on three cylinders. Talk to you all next cartoon, guys.